Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship as we are gathered together to hear God's word, to receive the gifts he gives in Holy Communion, to celebrate and give thanks for all the ways that our God blesses us and pours his grace into our lives. Special welcome to our guests and our visitors, to those of you who are joining us online. We're certainly happy to have you here today. Uh, for those of you that are worshiping with us, if this is your first time, would you please be sure to take a moment and fill out this little welcome sheet here and let us know that you are here. That is very helpful to us and to the ministry that we do here. Uh, this sheet is also a great way for those of you that aren't here for the first time to communicate with the office if you need to do so. Uh, if you need more information or you need to, to have me contact you or leave a prayer request, this is a great way to do it. So this doesn't have to be your first time here to make use of this sheet. Uh, so it has many good and helpful functions. Uh, anyone who would like to make use of a hymnal to have the music notes for the, the songs that we sing, those are available in the back in the narthex. You're welcome to pick one up and make use of it as we sing our songs of praise this morning. Immediately after the service today, there is our monthly coffee and donut fellowship. So please come downstairs to be part of that. Uh, the bell choir will be rehearsing today. If you uh, are, have thought about or wondered about what it's like to be in the bell choir, this is your lucky day. Because not only do you get free donuts and coffee, but you get a chance to play in the bell choir as well. So plan on being a part of that if you would like. And we're also having our 100th anniversary planning meeting that will be taking place after the fellowship time as well. So anyone who wants to be part of that is welcome to come and be part of that. In two weeks, on the 28th, we'll be having some guests from Habitat for Humanity coming. They're going to do a short presentation after the service to, to talk to us about some of the ways that we might partner with them and do ministry kinds of things with them and, and make a really big and good difference in our community. So plan on, on being part of that in two weeks. Finally, be sure to check your weekly news because that's got all the information that I remember to tell you and it's got all the information that I forgot to tell you. Like this one, I almost forgot. Uh, there is going to be no Wings uh, this month. So Wings is, has been canceled for this month and we'll pick up again next month. You can contact Vicki if you have any questions about that. So, uh, But be sure to check the weekly news. Uh, that gives you all the information that you need and you can find that on the church website. Our order of service is projected on the screens, as it always is. Please stand for words of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. He delivers those who are discouraged. Therefore, let us go to our God and confess our sins, knowing that our God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Gracious and merciful God, we confess that while we have been made new creations through the waters of our baptism, we still live ensnared by sin and are unable to free ourselves. We have not always lived our lives in accordance with the identity that you have given us in Jesus. We have not always done the things that you have called us to do. We have not always loved you above all else, and with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. We have not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us all our sins. Renew our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that our lives would show the identity you have given us in baptism and the new creations that you have made us to be. Amen. God's saints lack nothing. God's people are delivered from all their afflictions. In mercy, Almighty God has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As God's forgiven people, we greet one another for worship. May God bless our worship. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we'd like to invite our children forward for a children's message. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. The Lord be with you. I've got something in here, but I don't know what it is. So, oh, let's see. Look at that. What is that? Is that a lion? It looks like, is, is it a lion? A panther? Uh, what, what's, what's the mascot, Trish? Oh, it's a cougar. All right, so this is the... Misericordia cougars. Oh, it says it right there on it. Oh, okay, so this is a cougar. And what's, what's really special about this is that our, our good buddy Jackson is going to be going to school there really, really soon. Next Sunday will be his last Sunday with us. Now, I, I don't know about you. I've never met a cougar before. Have you? Right? I imagine that, that if I had come face to face with one of these, that it would be pretty scary, wouldn't it? I don't know about you, but if I ever came face to face with something like this, I would probably go in the other direction. I mean, this I can handle, right? But the real life thing, a real live cougar out in the wild, that would be terrifying. And sometimes in this life, we see and experience things that can be quite scary. But you know what? While this might be scary, for me, while it might be too hard for me, it's not too hard for our God. And our God promises to be with us always, and he will never leave us or abandon us or give up on us. And because he's with us always, then we can face the scary things in life. Sometimes going off to school by yourself can be scary, but God will be with you through it all, Jackson, you will never, ever be alone. So wherever we are, whatever we face, whatever we encounter in our lives, we can give thanks that our God is with us, will always provide for us, will always give us everything we need. And so we can say, go Cougars. <laughs> can I get a go Cougars? Go Cougars. Go Cougars. All right. Would you fold your hands and bow your heads and pray with me, please? Say, Dear God, thank you for always being with us, even in the face of scary things. Please help us to always remember that you love us very much and let us share your love with others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, well, we read about God being with us always in what book? The Bible. And the Bible is God's word. And God's word is sweet. That's right. So you may take a reminder with you and return to your seat. And the congregation will hear the reading of God's sweet word. Behold, the storm of the Lord, wrath is gone forth, a whirling tempest, 
It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn, turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far, far off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the, of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to, to make my people forget my name by their dreams, that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name to, for Baal. Uh, let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear the Lord, I have nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of the law. The epistle reading is from the 11th and 12th chapters of the book of Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of his sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the, of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the, than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn may not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time, uh, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who, th who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, uh, were made strong out of weakness, became might, mighty in war, uh, but foreign armies to fight, put foreign armies to fight. Women received back their, head of, their dead by resurrection. Uh, some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, uh, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world uh, was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains 
and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though uh, commended uh, through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better for us, that apart uh, from us they should, not be made, they should be made perfect. Therefore, uh, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that, uh, that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from, uh, from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or, or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Luke, the twelfth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, one, from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say once a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Before I begin the sermon, I want to make a, a quick note to make you aware of. Uh, you know, you've heard of growing pains before, right? Uh, and so we are at this moment experiencing a bit of growing pains in terms of technology. We have some new microphones that we have to try to get situated. And while you don't notice it as much necessarily here, it, it comes through in bigger ways on the live stream. So. Please be patient as we are trying to work these out and figuring these out. And none of the things that have gone on this morning are Jackson's fault. So he's, he's working hard to make sure that everything uh, is going the way that it's supposed to go. But these are growing pains, uh, and that's all they are. So it's, it's something to be thankful for, and hopefully will be over before too long. So end of announcement. My friends, I greet you this morning in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Do not think that I have come to bring peace. No, I tell you, I come to bring division. Wow. Those are some really tough words. Did hearing them make you feel a little uncomfortable this morning? 
In fact, the temptation is to the, instead skip these words and move on to something else. Maybe focus on Hebrews. That wasn't so bad. Or maybe something else that Jesus says that's a little bit easier to hear. Of course, the problem with doing that, that is when we just focus on the things that Jesus says that we like and not listen to the other things, and we make Jesus into our own image instead of letting Jesus be Jesus and make us into his image. And while these words can be difficult to hear, it is worthwhile to spend some time pondering them and what Jesus is saying to us in them and what they mean for us as we live out our lives as God's people. After all, these are the words of our Savior Jesus. These are the words of the one about whom the disciples said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. These are the ones whose words cause us to sing out hallelujah, regardless of whether they are easy or hard to hear. So this moment, this morning, we take a moment to hear what Jesus has to say. A good place to start any time that we are interpreting scripture, but especially when we are at a point that is difficult to interpret, a good place to always start without fail is context. Because these words weren't spoken in a vacuum. They weren't written outside of anything else around them. Rather, Jesus said them in a particular context. He said them at a particular point in time, in, in a particular culture where there were things going on. He spoke these words in that context. Uh, the, the author, St. Luke, put these words in a particular place in his gospel. They fit with what comes before and what comes after, and all those things help us to understand what Jesus is saying. So what is the context here? Well, our gospel lesson for today comes to us from the end of chapter 12. If you go back a few chapters to chapter 9, verse 51 specifically, we hear Luke tell us that Jesus set his face for Jerusalem. He put it into his GPS, Google Maps. Apple Maps, I don't know what they used back then, but he put it in and locked it in and made his way to Jerusalem. But this isn't a pleasure visit. He's not going for vacation. He's not going as part of the yearly pilgrimages that were prescribed in the Torah. No, he is going to fulfill his passion prediction. He's going to Jerusalem at this moment in time. He is setting his face to Jerusalem so that he, as the Son of Man, would be betrayed and suffer and die on the cross and be raised again. He's going to Jerusalem to die for the forgiveness of the sins of the world. This is a big deal. And so the cross remains on the horizon of everything that we see Jesus say and do from 951 on through to the crucifixion. And that's important for us to understand because it helps us to realize that there's a sense of urgency to what Jesus has to say. After all, there isn't much time left, and life for his disciples is about to change significantly and be, like, um, and be unlike anything they had known before. So Jesus speaks these words with that sense of urgency in that context of making their way to the cross. What's more is he's surrounded by large crowds of people who just don't get it. 
They don't understand who he is and why he's there and what God is doing in their midst. Hence his words at the end of our lesson about hypocrites. And you know what's coming by the weather. How come you can't see what God is doing right here? You see, Jesus often encountered religious leaders who saw him as a threat to their power, to their influence, to their control. In the crowds, there were people who found Jesus to be an entertaining teacher. After all, he taught unlike anyone they had ever heard before. Still, there were others that saw him as a meal ticket. You never have a hungry belly when you follow Jesus. Maybe others saw him as a good health care option. After all, we see him over and over again healing the sick and driving out demons. But even though he did do those things, and they all point us to who he really is as God in the flesh, as Emmanuel, as God with us, the people around him missed it. They didn't get it. And then there were still some, and even these were among the disciples, who expected that Jesus was going to lead a revolt against the Romans, drive out all of their enemies, and restore the kingdom of Israel and the glory days that the kingdom knew in the time of David and Solomon. That is what they were looking for. And that is the context in which Jesus says, don't think that I've come to bring peace, rather division. Because each of those groups had an understanding of what peace meant, but none of those understandings had anything to do with why Jesus was actually there. So for those that were looking for revolt, peace meant no more of our political enemies around us. For those who were looking to be healed or to be fed, peace meant a full belly and no ailments. For those who were the religious leaders, peace meant that this guy would just go away already and leave us and not threaten our power and control. Jesus said, Do not think that I've come to bring peace, but division. And this is something that we know and experience internally within us. We know the conflict that comes from division. After all, we are born sinful human beings. But God, in his grace and in his mercy, has brought us into his family in the waters of baptism, given us a new identity, declared us to be his own dearly loved children. And so that's who we are. We're God's dearly loved children, people of God, members of his family. We have a place in his kingdom. And yet, there still exists within us this sinful nature, and the two are often in conflict with one another. We experience division within ourselves as our baptismal identities battle with our sinful nature. The fancy theological phrase for this, and a great way to stop any conversation at any meal, drop the phrase, Simul justus et peccator. It's Latin. It means at the same time, saint and sinner. That is what we are. We have the sinful human nature in us that wants to be in control, that wants to be in charge. It doesn't want God to be in control. My sinful nature wants my will to be done, my kingdom to come. Thank you very much. But we know that the Holy Spirit in us calls us to a much better, greater way of life. And so we find this division that exists within us between our sinful nature and our baptismal identity. Thanks be to God that we are not our sinful nature, but are who God has declared us to be in baptism. And yet, we struggle with this division. 
And what we struggle with internally within ourselves can then spill out into the other relationships that we have with the people around us. It can spill out into those relationships in the homes, in our neighborhoods and communities and beyond. And so we see this division happening over and over. But it is ultimately the result of the kingdom of God breaking in to the midst of a sinful and broken creation. And when that sinful nature is challenged, there is going to be trouble. That's what Jesus is saying here. That's what he is speaking to. Each of the ways of peace that the groups around him are looking for aren't ultimately really, truly peace. The only source of real and true peace comes from Jesus because he's the only one that can give us peace with God. And indeed, he has. He does. Because of Jesus and his life and his death and his resurrection, your sins and my sins are forgiven. We are at peace with God. No longer are our sins counted against us. We don't have to wonder or worry whether or not God has forgiven us. We don't have to wonder or worry how God sees us. We know where we stand with him because of what Jesus has done for us. And even though we find ourselves battling with the sinful nature within us, we can always go to our God, run to him, knowing that he will hear us and forgive us and restore us. And this, this is wonderful, wonderful news. Our gospel lesson for today takes place in the context of a larger saying of Jesus or series of sayings of Jesus where he talks about the kinds of trouble and turmoil that we're going to face in this life. And he's not telling us these things to scare us, but rather he's telling us that when we have trouble, when we face these turmoils, when we have these trials, when we experience these divisions, don't give up. Because it can be tempting to end up in a place of hopelessness. It can be tempting to go along in order to get along. But those aren't the best options. Jesus tells us ahead of time that these things will happen so that when they do happen, we can know how to deal with them. So then how do we deal with it? How do we face it? How do we respond? What do we do? Well, if the only words that we had of Jesus were this lesson for today, uh, we, we might conclude that it would be kind of rough seas ahead. But thankfully, they aren't the only words of Jesus that we have. And so we can listen as he tells us, love the Lord your God with your entire being. And love your neighbor as yourself. And when we find ourselves in the midst of those divisions and those divisions get really tumultuous, then we also hear Jesus say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Treat others the way you would have them treat you. That is how we respond. We don't fight evil with evil. We fight evil with good. We respond to division with love. We seek reconciliation and restoration because that is what our God has done for us. We were separated from God by our sin, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, we have received the adoption into God's family as his children. So that the fire that Jesus talks about at the beginning of this lesson isn't just limited to fire of judgment, but the fire of the Holy Spirit, which we have received in baptism. 
And the Holy Spirit enables us and empowers us to live our lives as God's people, to, to resist that division that we experience between our sinful nature and our baptismal identities, and to align our will with God's will so that in us, among us, and through us, His will is done. And when we understand Jesus' words in this way, we hear them as words of hope and encouragement. When we find ourselves focusing too much on our own will and what we want and making things happen our way, then his words are a wonderful, gracious call to repentance, to change the way we think and act and turn back to our God. And when we find ourselves experiencing the pain of division that isn't necessarily caused by any action of our own, we hear Jesus' words as hope and comfort and reassurance. But maybe you're sitting there going, well, Pastor, how can Jesus say that he didn't come to bring peace? Isn't he the prince of peace? Well, yes, it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. He is the Prince of Peace. In fact, Luke's gospel is bookended with peace. We hear peace at the beginning as the angels saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom God favors. And at the end of the gospel, after Jesus' resurrection, he appears to his disciples and what does he say to them? Peace be with you. But the kind of peace that Jesus gives is not the kind of peace that the world gives or knows or understands. The world sees peace merely as a lack of, of, of conflict, whereas Jesus does peace that is restoring and bringing something back to a place of wholeness. And on this side of the resurrection, we experience brokenness and division as a result of sin. But the peace that Jesus brings will truly and fully be known when he comes back and restores his creation completely. And knowing that he is going to do that and that is what awaits us, that allows us to know the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Even in the midst of division of strife, of turmoil, and difficulty, and suffering. Yes, Jesus did not come to bring a false peace that is merely a lack of conflict. No, he came to bring division, to separate that sinful nature, the sin from his creation, so that his creation might truly be whole and restored and know what real peace is. And we get to live in the hope of that now, in this moment, in this day, and always. So God's peace be with you. And as we live our lives in this way, may God be glorified and may we be blessed now and always. Amen. Please stand to speak.
We make confession of our faith together in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving and gracious God, you have gathered us together to be your people in this world. You give us your Holy Spirit, your word, and the sacraments. Through these things, transform our lives so that they would always show your love and forgiveness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Gracious God, our fathers and mothers in the faith gave a good confession of your truth before the powers of this world. In the spirit of Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Ruth, and Mary, strengthen our hearts in days of division to confess in our words and lives the glory of your name. Increase our joy and zeal for living as your disciples who join you in your mission in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of false prophets. Equip your saints in our day with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and to build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you command your church to proclaim the message of truth and grace to the ends of the earth. Bless the southeastern district and the work we do in your name. We pray that you would provide workers for your kingdom, the resources needed for every mission and station to thrive, joy and strength for every worker and their serving, and the opportunity to grow and expand your kingdom through the witness and confession of the church. We place our hope and trust in you, for you are able to do immeasurably more than we can imagine or think. And so to you be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority in your mercy and replenish them by your grace, that all who receive the sword would bear it according to your word, always inclining to your will and walking in your way. Grant that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Allow justice, mercy, peace, and compassion to grow and increase in us, among us, and through us, and heal our world from the evils of injustice, prejudice, inequality, and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant healing to the sick, especially to those we love who need your healing and care that we name before you now, out loud or in our hearts. Grant them healing in accordance with your good and gracious will. Give strength to the weak and endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await your deliverance, and peace at the last. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Lord God, your Son told us that there would be division in our world. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of saints above all other relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our fathers and mothers, you bless your church with the enduring witness of your saints who now rest from their labors. As we join their heavenly communion in our Lord's Supper, grant that we would share their faith in Christ now and to life's end. Work through your means of grace to strengthen our faith and to increase our love and service to you, to one another, and to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and everything else for which we should ask, we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We 
Lift up this plate as a sign of the offerings that we give. Let us pray. Giving God, you provide us with all we need to support our bodies and lives. Your abundance and provision will never fail or leave us lacking. Allow your generosity to inspire our generosity. Accept the offerings that we give in the various ways that we give them throughout the week. Increase and grow our trust in you through the giving of our offerings. Be glorified in the giving of them as we give them in thanksgiving and with gratitude for all your blessings and gifts to us. Use them to further the work that you are doing in this place and all around our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. What feast of love is offered here? What banquet down from heaven? What food of everlasting life? What gracious gift is given? This, this is Christ. The King, the bread, come down from heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing how sweet the manna given. What light of truth is offered here what covenant from heaven what hope of everlasting life what wondrous gift is given this this is christ the King, the Son, come down from heaven. Oh, see and hear and sing the word of God is given. Offered here, 
what crimson drink from heaven what hope of everlasting life what precious blood is given this this is Christ the King the sweetest wine of heaven oh taste and see and sing the Son of God is given Blessed assurance, Jesus, taste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of spirit, washed of his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst from my sight, angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. at rest I am my Savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above with his good Lost in his love. 
story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts. Of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer.
pray. In his arms he'll take and cheer me. Yeah, the finest understand. 